Hello and welcome to Brand Next Reviews. So today I'm going to be doing an update on this story that the next James Bond will be more sensitive according to producers. Uh, they've gone as far as to say that Bond is evolving just as men are evolving. Now you can take that a number of ways. Obviously I've talked about the culture war on this channel in the past and kind of James Bond, the franchise, its place within that. This seems to be definitely part of that conversation. I'll read the article anyway, the key part of it. So, both Wilson and Broccoli, who is a director of the UK chapter of women's advocacy organisation Time's Up, have left their mark on Bond, particularly in humanising the once womanising spy and ensuring more fulfillia, fulfillia? fulfilling media roles for the female stars of the franchise. These are qualities that will continue in the next films, says Broccoli. It's an evolution, she says. Bond is evolving just as men are evolving. I don't know who's evolving at a faster pace. Craig, she adds, cracked Bond open emotionally, bringing audiences into the character's inner life. The films over his tenure were the first time we really connected the emotional arc. Kind of goes on from there to talk a little bit about some of the other stuff that they're going to be doing with the franchise with Amazon, because Amazon have got the claws into the franchise through MGM. Um, it's not a particularly good thing, that, for a number of reasons, but um, what I'm going to suggest is that uh, some of this be taken, not so much with a pinch of salt. I mean, it's it's accurate in the sense that we're talking about the, what the producers have had to say here, but the long-standing producers as well. Um, obviously they know what they're talking about, but it's more a case of it's early days yet. And I think we need to remember as well, there were a lot of rumours and so on about No Time To Die. That was the one that came out last year, 2021. Originally supposed, well, originally supposed to come out in like 2019, but it got, kept getting delayed and then 2020 and COVID and all that. Uh, throughout all that, there were all sorts of uh, leaks and rumours and I think some of the stuff that we could write off as, oh, that was just rumour. I don't think it was. I think because it leaked, some changes were made. And so obviously, ultimately, they didn't go full-blown work with that movie, thankfully. But a lot of things were being said about that movie and a lot of indications were that it was indeed going to be woke. Um, to the point where I didn't even go see that film on the day of release, which is unheard of for me. Um, but I was so concerned that they were going to ruin the movie by injecting um, this culture war nonsense, this garbage, this absolute poison, the message into the movie. Um, I didn't know if I even wanted to see it, to be honest. I've seen enough of the franchises go um, pretty much down the that rabbit hole and uh, I didn't want to see James Bond being a sacred cow and all that. I didn't want to see it go down that route, but it looks like here we might be seeing um yeah it does look like that's kind of the avenue that they wanted to go down but anyway um i'll cut across to me talking anyway um on camera so uh that's kind of the the basis of what i'm going to be talking about here today very quick 10 second promo and affiliated link for you with a discount code tactical soap we've got maverick bond and durden check out the video description for a link and a discount code so yeah, it doesn't really look good. It doesn't bode well for the future of the franchise, like I say. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with inserting a bit of a story arc for Bond. Obviously, this is nothing new in terms of a romantic point of view. We saw this with um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service back in 1969. That was a George Lazenby one. Not so beloved by the broad audience, but Bond fans, people that really do seem to know the character inside out and appreciate what it is that the broader audience also love about him. Um, consider that one a fan favourite. And I think some of the other ones as well have really been appreciated. Obviously, we had a couple of storylines in Tomorrow Never Dies and also The World Is Not Enough, where Bond was kind of emotionally compromised by a female throughout either part of the movie or the duration, part of a larger part of the story. And of course, we have the Daniel Craig movies where you had five movies effectively where Bond is hung up and damaged by this uh, short-lived uh, affair um, relationship almost that he had with the Vespa Lind character. In that, Obviously, that was based on a book uh, and that storyline was part of that book as well. So uh, that was part of the story by design uh, from the ground up. 
It wasn't something that was injected in because of some culture war agenda that has really got its uh, claws into the entertainment industry as well as many other industries. Long march through the institutions that was uh, so famously bragged about by far leftists back in the 60s and 70s, which is really showing fruit today. Um, not to get too deep into that, but that is really what we're talking about here with this. And um, that's kind of a warning that I've been giving with this franchise going forward. Um, Bond is one of the last ones to fall, really, when it comes to a lot of these. Um, having said that, we have seen um, not just films get made that push back against this, but ones that actually succeed like massively. And I'm talking about Top Gun Maverick. That was a very masculine film. In all the right ways, don't let the uh, the haters fool you. Masculinity is a good thing. Uh, father figures and role models are crucial to the health of society. Um, but uh, a lot of people would tell you otherwise. So uh, a film like Top Gun Maverick comes out and you have kind of a father figure now, well, kind of a grandfather figure nowadays with, with Tom Cruise, given his age. I think he's just turned 60. Uh, he's doing a good job, a very good job. Oh, bloody hell, one of the few um, real movie stars that we have left. That's a separate discussion, though. But it, just, it goes to show, a point is, the reason I mentioned that movie is obviously the amount of money that that film made. And it was, some people say anti-work, but it wasn't. It was just not work. And that's good enough. We aren't taking the position of anti-racists that say you have to not just be not racist, you have to be anti-racist. If you're just not racist, then you're racist. Try and get your head around that one. You have to do a bit of research if you want to know what I'm talking about there. Um, we don't need a movie like this Bond film to be anti-work. It just has to not be work to really uh, piss off I would say the right people, but the wrong people in terms of um, going to war with them and not getting your movies financed necessarily. So um, obviously that's why there's this big push with movies to make them bend the knee. And when we say work, let's be clear here, we're talking about the sacralization of historically, not presently, historically oppressed groups minority groups uh, in some cases but not all i mean women aren't a minority but in, obviously with bond um third wave feminism intersectional third wave feminism is something that is uh, really trying to ruin the franchise just so we don't have it they don't want to repurpose this franchise so that they can enjoy it for what it has now become and that shows in box office receipts of franchises where this kind of thing has happened. They don't get the kind of viewers, the people that ruin the franchise. They don't go watch these movies. They just don't want us to see what it otherwise would have been. And that's what we're seeing here. This might seem like I'm going off on a complete tangent, but I'm not. This is this is the heart of this. If they go down this route, if they take Bond in this inorganic direction... What I mean by that is Casino Royale, that film, having him fall in love with Vespalin, that was organic. That was part of the book. The books were very much part of that. I've read not all of them, but enough of them to know. You know, Bond getting emotionally compromised by a female is at the heart of the character. They can do that. But what I suspect they're going to do is they're going to feminise him. You see what I mean here? Saying that a man is sensitive, to me, doesn't mean being feminised at all. Men die for women and children all the time. Men are naturally sensitive like that. Men don't like seeing women get hurt. That's normal. That's evolutionary psychology. What we're talking about here, potentially, when they say they're going to um, make the character more sensitive, is the feminization of the character. Uh, because they have this ob obsession with um, this postmodernist obsession with um, defying scientifically, biologically real um, precedents in human history and e existence. Uh, this this all sounds very odd, but this this is what they're into. This is this is why the movies that you, that are coming out are a bit weird. 
that's where this mindset where this is coming from this isn't me viewing it through my lens this is me understanding it through their lens and explains why so many of these movie franchises have been ruined uh, and have this weird message to them so that's my concern anyway again like i say let's be optimistic here maybe as i was saying earlier on this might not play out at all the way that i'm concerned with and i was concerned with no time to die going down this direction and as i've said i am so grateful that they didn't push it too hard you can see you can see they wanted to there's little hints of it i've said this in previous videos you can see where they were trying to just take it off into that direction it kind of veered but then it came back on and, and it kind of towed the the line the james bond line as to who that character is not veering off and what the franchise is about um, and what makes the movies so great they, they stuck to that i believe with that last movie there's there's room for conversation there i, I understand a lot of counter arguments to it and i'm not entirely convinced uh, you know I, I can i can see other arguments to it but i personally i viewed it as, as good so hopefully they don't do that with this but it doesn't look good at all I think the only saving grace with the last one was the fact that it was Daniel Craig and they wanted to stay consistent with the previous movies and they haven't established full-blown workery and whackery with that franchise at that point. So I think it would have been too jarring to have Daniel Craig in a movie where <clears throat> the Me Too nonsense, uh, where it's overblown and exaggerated about the, the harsh realities that women live with. Um, a lot of that is bullshit. Ask Johnny Depp. Um, they were going to basically try to insert that into that movie but I think it would have been too jarring and it would have stood out that movie would have been the sore thumb and I think that that would have instantly led to its downfall at the cinema and it was already facing an uphill battle given the amount of money that they spent marketing that movie throughout all of the delays and so on I, think, I still think they actually lost money from what I understand of that movie the amount of money they would have lost um, if they'd have gone down that direction with that film, um, would have been a lot more than they actually did. So I think now that they've got a bit more of a blank canvas, they can start. They're, they're free to do what they want. I just won't be watching it if they go down that route. Um, so I won't be surprised, I won't be surprised if um, a hell of a lot of people um, believe that as well. I feel that way as well. But we'll see anyway, like I said, I don't want to be too negative because um, I was concerned about No Time to Die and as it turned out it was it was fine. Um, I mean it was a good film but it was fine in terms of the message not being, uh, didn't compromise the movie too much. So um, let's hope anyway and there is a long time to go until this movie gets released. I've said this time and time again on this channel whenever we talk about an upcoming Bond film a lot of what he said is usually um, said years down the line cause, because we have many years of nothing and then within a year there's something to actually talk about. But the majority of the time comes in those years when there's nothing. So let's just say 2022, nothing. 2023, nothing. 2024, nothing. 2025, nothing. 2026, the movie's then in production maybe. And for that year, the talk is actually of substance. But the majority of the time... The, those years leading up to it there's nothing there's nothing really of substance to talk about it's all theories and comments and things like that so that's the that's what this video is really for what it is like i say at this moment in time we are way out this this video will probably be very much obsolete so that's why i'm throwing this in here just for relevance because i have talked about things that have been said years in advance with Bond before and those videos are actually kind of relevant because the context I was throwing out there was we're years away from this yet and it's probably not going to happen and it didn't happen. Go on the channel Brandex Reviews you can see there's a Bond 26 playlist on there and I was talking about um, the person that would succeed after Daniel Craig um, what they were going to do with that back in 2014 so obviously it was it was obsolete then um we're still gonna be quite a long time away from this i reckon i do understand obviously amazon have got a clause into it they're gonna want to push ahead they're gonna want to uh, milk this franchise uh, as quickly as possible to get a return on their investment but um who knows there is talk of doing tv stuff whether it's going to be tv movies a dual cinema tv release 
or even a TV series, which I've kind of theorised before on this channel. Could be interesting. I mean, Bond didn't start with movies, it started with books. So who's to say you can't make a Bond TV series? It could work, to be honest. And I'm against TV series when they spun off from movies, but obviously it's not spun off from movies, it's spun off from books. So I'm open-minded. We'll see see what they do. Because obviously the movies took a lot, to, a lot of liberties. There's all sorts of directions they could go with the books. They could set the book, the TV, a TV series. They could set it in the, the era when the books came out. They could do them closer to the books. I kind of doubt that because I think there would... Um, Maybe some some rights issues there, but um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. There's all sorts of ways they can go that could work anyway. So on a positive note, hopefully there is something there for us Bond fans, us non work Bond fans, um, to enjoy. So uh, we will see anyway. So um, obviously I've kind of talked a little bit about culture war stuff in this video. I hate having to talk about this when I'm talking about entertainment, but it's just become part of the conversation now because it's infiltrated it to a, a fundamental degree. And it's just going to get worse if things carry on the way they are. So to analyse that and kind of understand what that's doing, um, we have um, a website that we have set up. You can go to brandxreviews.com and it'll take you to the website. Usually there's daily news, well there's always daily news in there, most of the time there's entertainment news as well that's kind of connected to this, other franchises that have fallen on the, the altar of uh, this this new age of wokeness. So, uh, no, that's a mouthful. Um, in all seriousness, you can go to brandxreviews.com, that will take you to the website and uh, like I said, daily updates on there. So if this subject is of interest or of concern to you, uh, you can go there and check that out and um, we have a recommended reading section and recommended media and music and movies that we recommend, all that kind of stuff. So culture war aside, there's some pop culture stuff in there as well that kind of connects to it as well. We're trying to have a bit of fun with it hopefully as well. So uh, one last thing I'll mention, uh, we have um, Tactical Soap, which is one of our affiliated links if you want to help us uh, pay some of our bills. So you can... Uh, to consider uh, buying tonight it is very nice stuff i did a video uh, intro earlier on in this uh, but the like i say the, the discount code for you is in the description of this video with a link but for now i'll just leave you there and say uh, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time thank you very much for watching Okay, it's that time of year again. Brandex Reviews is happy to announce there will be a 10th annual Halloween special. First of all, I'm very sorry about the uh, terrible animation here. What can I say? We're running on a low budget, so it's stock footage only. But anyway, um, the point of this is we do every year some horror-related videos, and this has been ongoing since the beginning of the channel, as you can see here. These are all the videos in our playlist, you can check them out for previous years. From 2013 when the channel started we were doing horror related reviews every Halloween, so it's a Halloween special basically. Some years we have a specific theme, for example one year we covered found footage movies, another year, I think it was 2020, we did all 1980s horror movies, that kind of thing. We don't usually announce what we're going to do until the actual videos themselves drop. So we're kind of keeping that a bit of a secret, but we do have a plan myself and my co-review with a core. We will be here in late October. The way it works is every night, depending on how many videos we do, leading up to Halloween night itself, we drop a video about 6 p.m., something like that. And um, that's what we're going to do this year. Can't say how many videos we're going to do, or like I say, what it's going to be about exactly. You're going to have to wait. This is just a very early announcement video but check it back anyway subscribe to the channel thank you very much very quick 10 second promo and affiliated link for you with a discount code tactical soap we've got maverick bond and durden check out the video description for a link and a discount code